So there used to be this guy called iDubs, and he was very popular on YouTube because he would say the N-word, and everyone loved him and said, iDubs, you're very funny, and we like you. And then he would go out of his way to like make fun of retards himself. But then the, the uh, a massive a massive problem emerged, and uh, he started dating this. Okay, so Anisa is like the worst she's ever looked in this. This is his girlfriend. She looks like a potato. So he starts dating this potato woman, um, and I assume that it is a sentient potato because usually, like when you start practicing tattooing, you do it either on like pig skin or on like fruit. And I just assumed that she was like a potato that someone picked up and started doing ink on because it would, um, you know, they were practicing their tattoo designs. So she's just like covered head to toe in like this this hideous amateur bullshit art that just looks atrocious. And now she's given up completely on life and looks like a sad potato. Dude, she's not walled. She's always been ugly. She just photoshops and wears makeup. This is just what she looks like when she can't photoshop and wear makeup, okay? Um... She, okay, so she is has Idubs like left. I think they're they're separated for a, an innocuous purpose. Like Idubs is on the on the run right now, trying to breathe fresh air, and because Aniza no longer has that ball and chain around her neck, she can now act like a full on fucking retard on the internet. So here's Aniza, and she's about to say some retarded shit. I've not actually watched through these. I just know that they're funny. So let's let's take a listen. This in the Patreon podcast. This person's lawyer, the shakedown lawyer used a commentary video okay that that insinuated insinuated i have to be very careful with my words here because this person will say technically they didn't say that insinuated that we pocketed money insinuated that we didn't actually lose money okay insinuated that it only costs a hundred thousand dollars to run an event like this which is not true okay this is in the millions this event costs in the millions to run i'm not kidding it's fucked up okay and that that all is is our responsibility we took that on because we wanted to do something fun and cool and good for charity and whatever it is a very expensive event to run there's a lot that goes on okay it's a huge thing it's a twenty thousand seat arena Anyways, the lawyer used the the YouTube video to say that this was proof that we were pocketing money. So the point that I was making with that clip that got taken out of context again, or like he just didn't understand what I was saying, is that we were in a shakedown lawsuit. And part of the reason why they thought that they could sniff bark up our tree was because commentary YouTubers have no idea what it is to work a normal job let alone put on a whole event. Okay. Oh, that's a good freeze frame. Hold up. Here we go. Hold, let's do this at like half speed. Put on a whole. There we go. Excellent. Okay. G sack. Let me explain. So this woman, as I mentioned, is married to that famous YouTuber. Who's now like a pathetic cuckold that everybody makes fun of. They tried to do that creator clash, uh, YouTube boxing match, uh, knocking off Logan Paul. It was supposed to be like a, a um, a boxing match, but it's supposed to be like kind of woke and gay and very sensitive towards feelings where there's no winners or losers. Everybody who comes out and puts on a good show is the winner, that kind of shit. Um, and this event cost a lot of money and was a failure. I think they lost money. I think that she said that they lost something to like the tune of like a quarter million dollars. It was like an absurd amount of money. Don't quote me on that. Um, and even though they kept talking about what a what a great amazing thing this was, this 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 boxing match that they did, and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was the best thing I've ever done. It was so worth it. We put in so much effort, and the rewards of being in the community were so overwhelming and so beautiful. And now she's like just explaining like their colossal fuck ups. They lost money. There's a lawyer that's like trying to get them kicked out of the event as like organizers because the the organizer is like the or the lawyer's like I'm looking at the numbers and there's no fucking reason that this should have lost lost money. Like you're either completely incompetent or you're stealing money from the foundation. Like this is just absurd. And she's jumping out at this because there might be re repercussions for being such a fuck up. Whole event, okay. You have no clue. You don't even know what it's like to clock in and have someone breathe down your neck. Dude, it, it's so much money. And like, when you think about what a boxing match is, it's two people punching each other. You know, how hard is it to set up an arena, get two people punching each other and stream it on YouTube? 
It's it should I could do that for like five thousand dollars. I think I could get that together. I could get an a live. I bet you. I bet you fucking money. I could get the equipment, the permit, the ring, the auditorium, and a thousand people in seats for like five thousand dollars and just let two retards punch each other. It's I, I, there's no excuse. There's no excuse whatsoever. So don't tell me. How much it costs, $100,000 does not even cost one quarter of the broadcasting fees. So, like, I don't know what crack these, like, commentary YouTubers are on, but I want some. Crack is getting No, popular. I know. This is going on. I love how I didn't wear makeup today. I look disgusting as shit. You all. Her her name on Twitter, by the way, is literally Anisa the Greasy. Like, that's just her brand. I look disgusting. I look like I don't bathe. I look like I'm covered in fucking oil. It looks like I got slimed Nickelodeon style by, like, a bottle of olive oil. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to cut on my, my, um, my camera, and I'm just going to talk about shit. And that's going to get clipped. But uh, this will go on every con. And I don't care. I'm at the point. I don't care. I don't care anymore. Because even when we don't say something... Even when we don't say something, they they think we're saying something. Go all out. Do you know what I mean? Declare war. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Declare fatwa on Keemstar. Inshallah, he will be beheaded. Get assumptions. Ah, it's loud. I don't want to hear any of that loud. What the fuck is that garbage on the wall? What kind of... She has, like, a, an enormous rodent cage. I'm assuming that's a rabbit. And then she just has like random pictures of like old women with like tattoos on them. I guess that's her. I, I want I want to be old and tattooed, and that's like her her shtick. Like, just out so out of pocket. I don't know. I know a lot of them have never worked a real job. I know that for a fact. And if you have fun fact, I had that exact same microphone and arm stand when I uh, when I lived in Ukraine. Have you worked there for a week and you cried and you quit? Apparently it's a Rottweiler cage. A rot, a Rottweiler cage. Chat. Look at me. I'm gangster. I'm gangster. I got the big dog, the red and black. Woof, woof, woof. You send your shitty little dog at me. I'm on that. My dog gonna eat your dog. Cause we we hard hitting gangsters and shit. That's the other thing that that a lot of these people assume is that I never worked a real job. Bro, I didn't get on the internet until I was 21. I had to pay for my own fuck. I was in college working like uh, a fucking serving job. Okay? I was doing both. I had four to five. Okay, Aniza, you're using 100% of your brain power. I can see it. I've worked at Whataburger for over a year when I was in college as well. I did get my degree. I became an internet insane person instead. Does that mean that I get to make fun of you? I'm a commentator, technically. I have worked a service job. I have worked a real job. And I have a degree. So by your 1 million IQ brainiac uh, logic, I get to make fun of you all I fucking want. And I get to call you a fuck up. That seems to be the what you're implying here. Classes a semester. And then I would go work a serving job. Okay. And before that, I worked at a pet store. And a Dairy Queen. Because I, because I function in society. <laughs> and then I got lucky. Uh, yeah, I have like like weekly visits with my therapist. I'm on SSRIs. I have occasional mental breakdowns where I start OnlyFans and ritualistically humiliate my cuckold husband. But I, I heck can function. I can live stream. I can set up a boxing mat. I'm functional. But I was fucking metric. You're a net deficit. You run into the you run into the negatives. You ruined your husband's life. Your 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 business enterprises are in the red. You are not functional. By by literally what metric are you functioning? Congratulations. You managed to figure out a way to get food into your fucking mouth. You don't live on the streets, I guess. I'm pretty sure HSA, FSA take care of that shit now. You don't have to worry about that. There's no laws conditions. Right? I got lucky and I started making money on the internet, so I quit. But I've been working, I had been working since I was like 12, no, I'm not even kidding, 12 years old. Because in Canada at the time, I don't know if now, but at the time, if your parents sign, your you can sign something, you can work. I worked at a movie theater when I was a kid. 
But I, you fuckers. She would, she would cut picture, uh, cut single frames of pornography into children's fr- films. She was, she was so good at her work. Not even a, a hummingbird could catch her. That are looking at this right now. I know, I know that you would fucking cry if I said something to you in real life. I know you would cry. How do I know? Because I've done it to one of you fuckers in real life, and you have cried. You cried and apologized to me, and you even said that I made you feel like a bitch. She's talking about and Rusty Cage. I'm glad Cage, by the that way. I did, to be honest. Some more people should do that to you. Rusty Cage went into um, her boxing match or whatever, and she randomly like found him, like she recognized him, and just walked over and like surprised him. And she said, "Hey, what you said wasn't cool." And he's like, uh, "I'm sorry." And then he went on Twitter and said, you know, I, I kind of, in retrospect, I feel like a bitch. I shouldn't have apologized to her. And now that's like her trophy. That's like her, her she, that's, she clings to this. It's like I made Rusty Cage apologize by confronting him, you know, at, at, a, at a complete fucking random. Therefore, I'm a, a boss bitch. I'm a winner. Did, and, you know, we Ooh, did wow. karaoke and whatever. There's alcohol there. Um, and close friends are allowed at this party. It's in a... Um, it's in a hotel okay <laughs> and this fucker snuck in well, he was not supposed to, to get in the reason why he got in was because he happened to say uh, by accident the name of one of our like higher ups and was like oh um John- he knew the names of the organizers are like public they're all on twitter so he just says um he picked one of the names out and said yeah justin says i can come in Justin said I could get in, right? And so they 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 gave him a wristband. So he got in. And I saw on Twitter the day before that he was tweeting shit, right? He was like putting he was he was he was doing that thing where you don't like fully commit to being a fuck, but like enough of a fuck that like he basically wore like a free froggy fresh shirt or like held the sign or something. I think it was a, he had a Krispy Kreme shirt on or some shit and he was like there was like a free froggy fresh sign that like made it to the front of the like walkout of Ian's walkout and he like tweeted the uh picture. No, it wasn't Brandon Buckingham. It was fucking um I always call him Rusty Spoon, but I think his name's Rusty Cage. Um I like, I like Rusty Spoons. Rusty spoons feel good on my sausage fingers. Shirt. If you're a real OG, you'll know what that means. Or like held the sign or something. I think it was a, he had a Krispy Kreme shirt on, made it to the front of the like walkout of Ian's walkout, and he like tweeted the uh, picture. No, it wasn't Brandon Buckingham. It was fucking, um, I always call him Rusty Spoon, but I think his name's Rusty Cage. Um, he was snuck into the party. Okay, so Ian wasn't around much like right now, which is why I'm doing this right now. Uh, Ian wasn't around. He was somewhere else. And I saw that fucker. I saw him waiting in line for free alcohol. And I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I fucking walked over there. This Alpha Bevel saw Rusty Spoons there and said, this motherfucker is about to cyber bully my boyfriend slash gimp not on my watch i'm gonna i'm gonna take out the trash and bro's like little okay he's already like a small guy and i had platforms on so i was real big that day and i walked over (laughs) and i i just put my hand on his shoulder right i leaned over and i said hey man uh what you did yesterday uh really fucking uncool actually and uh, he was like, oh, uh, like he was shocked, right? And he even admits this. He admits that he he apologized to me. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And I was like, no, you meant it. And it was shitty. And I fucking walked uh, away. I just walked away. I was like, whatever, you can fucking stay at the party. But I want you to know that I think you're a fucking dick. Um, and it clearly, <laughs> it clearly got to him because he ended up in like some interview later saying that it made him feel like a bitch. Why would you admit that? Why would you ever be honest about things? Here on YouTube, we're never honest. 
I feel like every time you go to work, there's a mob of people who just show up. Yes, yes. And, and I think it's frustrating because I think the only way out of it and to build like a, a, a community that feels good to like talk to is to, to do it, you know, to get up and do it regardless of the, the mob and to not think about like that aspect. But that is very hard, like to do. Mm. I mean, maybe, like, you shouldn't make everything about you public. Like, when your butthole's, like, out there on the internet, maybe you've gone too far. You, you've you gone too far in a few places, and you shouldn't have done that. I don't understand this, this pathological desire to have, like, this community of, like, dick suckers that'll just praise you continuously. Like, do you not have any confidence in yourself? Do you not have any... Confidence in your own actions or your any self-esteem. No, you need to like cultivate a following that does that for you. Okay. I look around now and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what? How did I become like one of the like least liked uh, people? Well, let's see. First of all, you ruined somebody's career. You made him unlikable in the process. You look like a 13-year-old boy. You have a face of a potato. You're covered in shitty amateur tattoos. You spend people's money on, on some of the most pathetic designs that I've ever seen. You chase after other men besides your boyfriend in a really obvious and pathetic attempt to get their attention by buying their, their tattoos. Um, you're hideous inside and out. You're obnoxious. Your voice is grating. You make bad business decisions. You run things into the ground continuously. You're self-centered and, and just basically uh, in fucking tolerable at all times. Um, probably some combination of those factors. On the internet. Oh, you showed your butthole on the internet. You made your your husband take a picture of you naked for OnlyFans on the day of your your honeymoon. Um, some combination of those factors as well, probably for some people. I feel like, I feel like. More people hate me than Onision. And yeah. maybe it's because I'm I'm in it, like I'm in I'm seeing it, but that's what it feels like. It feels like I quit college to become the most hated person on YouTube. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> smile. What, what a shit eating grin. <laughs> Durr. Wait, where's that grin at? On YouTube. Look at that grin. What the fuck? Oh, hold on. I'm taking a picture of that. It's like, um, <laughs> hold up. Let me find this real quick. She, she looked, the way she's smiling reminds me of this. Hi, Dubs. Why did you marry Mr. Dink? I don't understand. He's even got the same potato face. What the fuck are you doing, bro? What a disaster. What a, what a fucking disaster. Where did he go? There we go. <laughs> Lord of the Onion. You know what's uh, funny? I said to my, I made a joke about Onision to my therapist that I, I, I didn't think she would get. Bro. That is a, that is a, that is a, there are some words, like, language has power. There's a reason why in, like, demonic lore, there's always, like, words or phrases of, like, power and conjuring. I spoke to my therapist about Anision. It's like, and then, like, a door opens and, like, an ancient Egyptian curse, like, flies out and possesses something. That's like a, that's like a curse phrase that should not have been uttered aloud. I forget that she, like watches she knows like some youtube lore and she burst out laughing and i was like whoa i was like onision mentioned okay obviously i don't have a, a particularly strong relationship with therapists and mental health types and, and my depression and shit i'm gonna say this if you live in like la and your therapist if you say these cursed words um, I, you know, I, you're talking to your therapist about Anision, and she claps back, Whoa, Anision mentioned. You are in the wrong place. You're fucking up. You have miscalculated. You have subscribed to something that you do not want. 
Mayday. Mayday. SOS. SOS. Like, th th that's a fucking problem. That should be a red flag. And I thought ah, I was... Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Anisa snuck up on me and, and scared the fuck out of me by screaming at me. ...going to pass out, because it's on the spine, too. Like, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. It's on, like... Like... Bro, it looks so fucking bad. What the... Bro... And then it reminds me, she, um, by the way, that tattoo, let me just rewind it, because this tattoo on her back, there is a guy that she's obsessed with, obsessed with. He's a tattoo artist in L.A. He's like a gross hipster. He looks kind of like I-dubs. She's in love with this guy. She wants to fuck him. She probably has fucked him. Um, but he's like an artist that she's obsessed with. And by the way, you can see very clearly uh, her spiderweb tattoo that's associated with MS-13. Um, I figured I would mention that. That's one of her many mistakes. She literally picked that one off the wall during like a manic phase and had like a gang sign tattoo uh, tattooed onto her. The back tattoo as a whole, though, it may look like a bunch of random shit. Like I can kind of see like the orc um, World of Warcraft horde symbol here. There's like a snake design. There's like a like a de, de, Dia Muerta type skull right there. It may look like a bunch of random shit, like, clobbered together. Um, this is actually a design piece. The entire thing is one piece, and it was supposed to be, like, the um, the magnum opus of this, of this particular tattoo artist. He sat down, and he sketched this, and he put it on his site and says, this is my design. This piece speaks to me. It's a full back tattoo. This is my um, the pinnacle of my artwork, and I want to sell this one time to one very special person for the low, low price of $10,000 as living art. And Aniza is the person who bought that. It was literally like $10,000. This t back tattoo is like the... I, I don't even know what you would want to call it, what the word is, but it's like this artist's like, apex, what he's very proud of. And he tattooed it on her, and she showed it off. And I think it was supposed to get colored at some point. It's still not colored. I guess they ran out of money. <laughs> maybe he, maybe she tried to suck off that guy, and he's like, um, I'm married. Get the fuck away from me, clout, clout potato. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, but, yeah, it's still not colored in. It's just terrible. And when I first saw this, like, when she revealed this to the world, my first instinct was to, like, go on to Bing AI images. And I might even have these images somewhere on my... Actually, I don't think I do, not on this uh, computer. But I just typed in, like, woman, full back tattoo, snake, flame, skulls. I just, like, threw in all these different search terms for, like, what, you know, terms that, like, to load up the AI image generation thing with, like, what it looks like. And um, it gave me results that literally looked better than what this guy um, had tattooed on her for $10,000. Um, and it, even the ones that didn't look better, they looked like the same. It was just like this random assortment of bullshit. Um, and she's so proud of it. And it's like, you look like shit, lady. You look like fucking garbage. You look like you belong in a fucking dump. You look like you're if you if someone like poached you like a buffalo and skinned you and hanged up your skin like a rug on a wall, you would look like an assortment of test designs that a bunch of students had carved into a pig skin during a during a day of practice at art school. It would not look like a cohesive design. It wouldn't look like a um like a like a piece of art. It would look like a practice sheet that someone had carved into pigskin and threw away. Like, I, don't, I have no fucking idea what has to be wrong with someone's brain to do this kind of shit. And then, and then he says to me, as, as he's, like, doing the short lines... Sorry, I thought I could enjoy some water while she was talking, but she has, for some reason, decided to stop talking. Uh, Anisa the Greasy says, I'm just bored, so I'm streaming on Twitch and chatting. Come talk to me for a bit while I wait for Ian to come home from Los Angeles. The short stream was so fun. I already feel like I'm getting, I'm shaking off the rust. 
Uh, this is what she had to say about Ian while she was streaming. This one was really bad. We were driving from Edmonton or uh, Seattle to Edmonton. We had stopped for Tim Hortons, and he had gotten donuts and a double double. In Canada, we don't use oil based creamers. We use cream creamers. So the combination of the the gluten from the donuts plus the uh, lactose caused him to have an emergency like he had to like stop the car and like he thought he was gonna have to go in the woods because it was so bad but we ended up finding a bathroom and uh ian has irritable bowel syndrome and from what i understand his diet is like the most restrictive diet i've ever heard of he 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 can't eat certain things in combination but he has to be careful with like gluten dairy meat like all sorts of shit alcohol i don't think he can drink alcohol um in combination with certain things like his diet is one of the most restrictive ones that i've ever heard of um for him not to like shit himself and he's finds this hilarious by the way and has repeatedly made fun of the fact that he has literally shit his pants and has just like openly said this on podcasts like yeah my my husband shits himself on the rag like he eats shit that he's not supposed to and he just like dumps into his pants and he he's like a pathetic child in that sense it's really like disgusting and uncomfortable um i should mention at this point i just remembered this the reason why ian and anisa are together in the first place is that ian kind of got onto youtube young and i think he came from like a bad place in life i think that he had um issues with his family i want to say his father was a convict and had gone to prison so he lived without a, a, a positive role model for a long time he gets out big on youtube and he starts getting hit up by by clout potatoes and clout goblins like anisa and then anisa is like his first girlfriend so idubs has no idea what a healthy normal relationship looks like when you're a teenager and you're like confused and you're like tiptoeing into relationships um, I think it's pretty common for people to have bad relationships early on, but then after like a couple, a couple like dates or girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever, you kind of realize like, this is what a normal person does. This is how a relationship is supposed to feel. Um, and it's supposed to be easy and not incredibly painful. <laughs> like that's a lesson that I think people have to learn. Like a relationship is, is it's supposed to be easy to like somebody. You're not supposed to be in pain constantly while in a relationship. And Ian never learned that. So he's in this relationship with this horrific, uh, troglodyte, um, that has, uh, I mean, it's hard to say if she directly ruined his life or if she was just like in his life as he ruined his own life. Um, but I think that he just doesn't, he honestly, even as like a 30 year old man, he just doesn't have the life experience to know that this is not normal. Your spouse isn't supposed to go on to social media and talk about how you're an incontinent little baby that shits himself, um, all the time. So, and you're, you know, you're not supposed to, your spouse isn't supposed to show her asshole on, on only fans and fail, fail at showing her asshole and making money on only fans. Uh, she, he he literally just doesn't know because she was his first and she, he doesn't have a fucking clue. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.